if you are into working with the moon, you could argue that this week is the biggest week of the year as we get a new moon eclipse. And it's not just a new moon eclipse. It's a new moon eclipse in the first sign of the zodiac, Aries. And it doesn't matter what your sign is. This is big news. And now I'm going to explain why. So the key words for this new moon include first one is lovely healing so if you need healing there is healing on offer power so if you've been feeling powerless it's going to be a week when you can tune in to get more power second chances who wants a second chance with someone if you want a second chance with someone or with something that's on offer and it's also got a keyword of change making change making it's a time when changes can happen so quickly running through the times for this new moon in la april 8 11 20 a.m in new york april 8 2 20 p.m in london april 8 7 20 p.m and in sydney april 9 4 20 a.m so if you're going to be making new moon wishes and i strongly suggest you do make new moon wishes this week because it's a new moon eclipse then you want to make them as soon as you possibly can after that time I just read out for you. So astrologers do disagree on a lot of things. Let's be completely frank here. Astrology is such a broad subject. It's been around for literally thousands and thousands of years. So there are bound to be differences. There are huge disagreements regarding something called the house systems. So some people use Placidus, some people use Reggio Montana, some people use Equal, some people use whole sign houses. Now, for the record, I use whole sign houses as recommended by some of the best astrologers in the world like that you probably haven't heard of we maybe you've heard of the second one but Robert Hand one of the greatest astrologers alive uh, now in his 80s living I think in Virginia in the USA and then there is also someone who's sort of been anointed as his um, successor uh, the, the guy who's going to bear the mantle of the greatest astrologer alive in my humble opinion Chris Brennan who does some really amazing work have a listen to his podcast Chris Brennan astrology podcast is great I, I was on there actually talking about the moon um, so yeah and we, we call the disagreements about houses for example we call that astrology's dirty little secret because it's not something you really get to know about uh, until you start to study astrology for real another one could be for example the fact that we are often many many astrologers now including traditional astrologers uh, will use the planetoid Chiron which is um, a newer celestial body and then in astrology every planet or heavenly body has a ruler and you know people don't necessarily agree on who, what rule which sign rules Pisces uh, sorry astrologers don't necessarily agree on which sign rules Chiron for example However, all that said, I think there is one thing that we can all agree on, us astrologers, and that is that eclipses are hugely important moments in time. Funnily enough, this eclipse this week is most certainly geared towards opening up possibilities for a quantum jump. Now, if you don't know what a quantum jump is, it basically is those times where your life changes seemingly overnight one minute you're living x life everything seems absolutely fine and normal maybe even a bit tedious and then bang something happens and your life completely changes as if by magic overnight now this can be a good thing you know it can be you win the lottery or you meet the love of your life or you get offered an amazing job in a faraway country out of the blue things like that can happen and that will bring you around to a quantum leap it's the kind of thing where your friends will you know write to you and say what you've moved to Paris when did that happen you know stuff like that I must have missed an installment they can be for the best, but they can also be challenging. It can be, you know, one day you think you're, uh, you know, very happy in your job, trundling along, and then bang, the next day the organisation's closing and everyone's being made redundant, you know, something like that. God forbid. Um, you know, stuff like that. God is forbid. So that's a quantum leap when your life can change overnight. But what people have been doing for the past few years is actually looking at how to deliberately quantum leap. And that's probably a big uh, session in this podcast for another time. But overall, know that eclipses in general, and this eclipse in particular, are extremely good for a quantum jump. As it happens, 
This eclipse is all about a time where you can use imagination, visualization, and affirmations to make that leap. So in other words, what you want to do is in the lead up to the eclipse, so maybe starting from now, start to think about the methods that you can use to get yourself into a headspace where a quantum leap that you want to make becomes possible. So do you need to visualize? Do you need to meditate? Do you need to affirm? Do you need to chant or journal? What is going to work for you? Do you need to program your mind before you sleep? There are plenty of people out there who offer information about that. So if you want to make a big leap this eclipse week, you need to feel your desire as real. Okay, you need to feel your desire as real. Affirm it as real, believe it as real, see it as real, and, you know, get out there and meditate and daydream and visualize whatever it is, the quantum leap you want to make, visualize that. Now, just one caveat, one caveat. Don't try and manipulate anyone, okay? So just say you can't stand your neighbours and you want them to move out. Don't visualise them packing their bags and walking out the front door because that's manipulating them. Visualise yourself, for example, having a lovely street party with all your neighbours and everyone's happy and, uh, you know, including you with your neighbours. So whether it's your current neighbours and you all kiss and make up or it's because you've got a new set of neighbours, you know, what you need to wish for is a feeling. You know, if you want a new job, don't visualise shouting to your boss, I quit. Visualise being very chirpy as you, you know, sling your bag over your shoulder, across your body or whatever, and head out to your new job that you love. And you can have your affirmation, which I really love people to do. I love my new job and my new job loves me. For example, okay, if you are in my Mainly Moonology membership, we will be diving deeper into all of this this month. Uh, very much um, talking about manifesting and how to manifest with the new moon eclipse. And if you are not in my Mainly Moonology membership, but you would like to be, just go to Mainly Moonology membership.com and sign up and you should be in time to uh, join me for whatever we do for this uh, manifesting moment and uh, if not you'll get the replay okay so what I wanted to do now is just finish off something I started a month ago which was um, about a kind of a way of telling you what you need to do at the time of the new moon by telling you what not to do. And we can put a link to the past episode in the show notes uh, so that people, if you haven't seen or if you haven't listened to the podcast, the first one about what not to do at the time of the new moon, you can hear the first one to five suggestions I have for you. And now I'm going to do uh, suggestions six to ten, so five more suggestions of what not to do. And in a way, it's just a funny way of telling you what you should be doing at the time of the new moon. And this is an eclipse, so how to make the most of this new moon eclipse. So the first one I came up with is one thing you shouldn't be doing this week in the lead up to the eclipse is resisting rest, okay? Not resisting arrest, resisting rest, R-E-S-T. Why? Because the new moon can be a time where we go into a lower energy cycle. We can't see the moon. We're not getting moon beams down, the, down onto us, which balance the male and the female, the masculine and the feminine. The moon is important to our energy. And when we can't see the, the moon at the time, just before the new moon and at the time of the new moon, it becomes very important to rest and recharge. I will actually be doing a dark moon special challenge uh, ahead of the new moon. I hope if we all get organized, I'm recording this quite a few weeks in advance. Hopefully if you uh, look on my Facebook page, you should find a link to that where we will be uh, looking at ways to rest and recharge ahead of the eclipse and also to release and let go any stuff that we need to let go of. So really in a nutshell, in this week, as we move towards the new moon eclipse on April the 8th or April the 9th, uh, depending on where you are in the world, um, 
Don't overexert yourself. Don't overexert yourself. Don't resist rest. All right, number seven. Now, this is a really obvious one, but I really wanted to make sure I said it. Don't overlook the power of goal setting. Don't overlook the power of goal setting. Now, if you're like me and you are obsessed with to-do lists and you have to-do lists all over your office and house, then you already know the power of goal setting because when we write things down, we create a goal. And once we have a goal, we are far more likely to align our actions with getting those things done. So I remember back in the day when I was single and living in Bondi Beach, being this kind of crazy freelancer girl, just doing whatever I wanted to do, swimming and you know, and so on. One thing I didn't always do, though, I say I was swimming, I wasn't always getting outside as much as I should and I wasn't taking as much exercise as I should. It was kind of wild days and, you know, wild nights and all that. So I remember once I'd done this list which had something like, you know, do the daily stars, do the weekly stars, write that special feature and take a walk on the beach. And I remember my flatmate of the time who spied this list on my desk somehow just thought it was hysterical that I had to write a list to take a walk on the beach because for her she was very outdoorsy and she would go for a walk on the beach every day without having to think about it. And she just thought it was so funny that I would put this on my list. And I thought it was so funny that she thought it was so funny because to me those lists that we make, they're so important. They're basically setting intentions for what we want to accomplish in a day. Okay, so... The new moon is the time for your to-do list, you know, and it doesn't have to be little things like write the weekly stars or take a walk on the beach. It can be, you know, um, find a new job or um, get my mum into a care home or whatever. Not that my mum's going into a care home, please God. (laughs) She wouldn't be happy with hearing that, but you know what I mean, like doing stuff that needs doing. So goals and intentions are always important, but they are genuinely never more important than at the time of a new moon eclipse because the new moon eclipses energy is really conducive to planning and goal setting. And because of it being an eclipse, you get that quantum leaping or quantum jumping thing as well where you can actually make massive changes and I don't want to digress too much but just talking about when I used to live in Bondi back in the day uh, during that period of my life I actually had another experience to do with new moon intentions and goal setting which was extraordinary so I'll just tell you really really quickly Um, a guy called Dennis who uh, was working as a life coach he was sort of a friend of a friend And uh, he said to me, would you like me to come over and do some coaching for you, free of charge, we'll just, you know, we'll do some stuff. And I was like, sure, why not? So I made sure that he came over on the day of the new moon because I knew enough already about goal setting and intention setting and making wishes on the new moon to be really powerful. So he came over and I gave him a list of, we came up with a list of my intentions. And I remember on there I had multiple wishes, maybe five or ten intentions that I was setting, which included things like get a new column in the paper, in the newspaper, local paper, which is quite a big deal. Uh, Another one I remember was I wanted to get myself a VW Beetle car. You know, so I wrote that down. Uh, Another one was to go to come to London on a holiday because I already had lots of friends here and I wanted to see my friends. I hadn't seen them for some time. So some quite big wishes that I made. And we wrote them all down and that was fine and I put the piece of paper away and off Dennis went and I don't think I ever saw him again after that. Anyway, um, about I think maybe three to six months later or maybe six to 12 months later, I was doing something around the living room and this list sort of fell out between two books on a bookshelf or something like that. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that's that list I made with Dennis all that time ago, months and months ago. And I read it and I kid you not, every single thing on that list had come true. I had a new column in the paper. I had the VW Beetle. I'd been to London and back and whatever else I had on there. And I was blown away, but it was just a lesson in the power of intention setting, especially the power of intention setting at around the time of the new moon. So make 
your intentions, set some intentions. Um, and I will be doing a Facebook Live that's free to everybody. Um, I will be doing that on my page on the at the time of the eclipse, I think. I'm 99 percent sure. So just check my Facebook events page if you'd like to join. It's free and you just need to register and then you'll get sent a reminder. All right. Okay, number eight. And now this is a big one, and this one definitely you could say applies uh, always, always, but especially at the time of a new moon and especially, especially at the time of a new moon eclipse. Do not engage in negative self-talk, okay? So don't be criticising yourself, okay? You know, saying, oh, I'm such an idiot, oh, I'm so old, oh, I'm so fat, all those things that, you know, it's so easy to say those things to ourselves. all right? Focus instead on positive thoughts, positive affirmations and self-empowerment. Now, why? I just have to pick my dog up. So if you're watching this on YouTube, here comes John T. <laughs> he always makes that noise. Um, he just He's just begging me to pick him up, so I want to pick him up. Okay, so, John T, why do we not engage in negative self-talk at the time of a new moon eclipse especially? Because when it comes to setting intentions, what really matters is how much you believe you are worthy of your wishes, how much you think you can achieve your goals, okay, how much you believe that your intentions can actually manifest, all right? So when I do workshops, and I, I will be doing some more workshops in the near future, but when I do workshops I, I and a new moon workshops, I often say to people, make your new moon wishes and then give yourself a mark out of 10 for how likely you think those wishes are to come true. And then that is pretty much how likely they are to come true. So if you think, oh, well, I reckon that wish is 50%, uh, I believe in that wish 50%, then chances are it's got about a 50% chance of manifesting. Because the thing is as well, we only manifest what we think we can manifest, okay? Our intentions will only manifest insofar as we believe they are possible. So if you are indulging in the luxury of self -talk, uh, negative, negative self-talk, then you are basically having self-doubt, you're doubting yourself, doubting your ability to manifest whatever it is you want to manifest, doubting your worthiness to receive whatever it is you want to receive and that is when the trouble starts okay that is when the trouble starts and then when that's when you start to be wasting your wishes because um you are don't believe in yourself and if you don't believe in yourself then your wishes are never going to manifest so avoid negative self-talk this new mini clips focus on positive affirmations about yourself and self-empowerment all right second last one a big one don't disregard your intuition, okay? Don't ignore your inner voice. The new moon is very much a time to tune into inner guidance. We have the dark moon just before the new moon. It's a very mystical time. It's the time of the dark goddess. And you are likely to get some quite strong intuitions, not just about what you're manifesting, just about life in general. So it's not a time to be disregarding your intuition. If you're getting a little whisper, then pay attention. As my beloved uh, mentor, Jonathan Caney, used to say, intuition, it comes as whispers on the wind. And then what happens? Then we just go, oh, and then we just forget about it. You know, it's really important. That's why journaling is such a good practice. Make a note if you get a big intuition and write it down. You know, pay attention to the whispers on the wind of intuition that are coming your way this week. And last but not least, don't forget to create a sacred space, okay? Don't overlook the importance of creating a sacred environment for yourself when you're going to be doing your wishes. A calm and serene space can really help you get in touch with your higher self. It will boost your meditating. It will boost your new moon rituals and all your practices. So don't forget to make a sacred space, it can be something as simple, like really basic. If you've got nothing else, get yourself a bath mat, you know, a bath mat or a shower mat. It's like one of those furry things you put outside the, fat, the shower or the bath. I think they're pretty international. Not very big. Put that somewhere in your house and designate that particular space as your sacred space. And then I would also ideally, you know, again, at very basic, Get yourself a shoebox, an old shoebox, put some beautiful material on it, 
put some incense or some essential oil or a space for your oracle card of the day, some crystals, some candles, some pictures of any of the deities that you really relate to. And just create the sacred space so that when you meditate every day, you go and sit in this space. When you do your chanting, you sit in this space. When you do your journaling, maybe you sit in this space. And what they say is that this area will become built up with very good energy, especially if you are doing chanting and meditating and so on. So, in fact, when I go to India, uh, to the ashram there, the Sri Narayani Pedam in Valor uh, in southern India, one thing that um, the teacher Sri Shakti Narayani Amma does there, which is really powerful, is Amma does a lot of chanting with um, putting their hand on a what's called a yantra. I won't go into what a yantra is, but it's basically a piece of metal with a sacred symbol on it. It's um, it's pretty much like a physical rep representation of a mantra. So Amma will put their hand on the yantra and chant so that the energy of the chanting goes into the yantra or even just chanting in front of the yantra will energize the yantra with the energy and in the same way if you meditate chant listen to beautiful music burn um, incense or diffuse essential or anything like that in the same place every day that altar will build up beautiful energy and uh, really it's a very very powerful time to be starting um as we go into the new moon eclipse this week. So I hope that really helps you. It's going to be a very big week for some people. If you seem to just sail through it, it could well be that um, you are are just living life exactly as you're meant to be living it. There's no need for the universe to come and thwack you and change your course or change your direction. If you have my Moonology Diary, make sure you have a look at the section that says where this eclipse is for you, which house, because depending on your rising sign, it could be in your love zone, it could be in your work zone, it could be in your one of your two money zones. So just be sure that you pay attention to where the eclipse is going to be taking place for you because that is also really powerful information. And if you do nothing else, make sure you go back. The times, again, the times are all in the diary if you've got the diary, but I did give them at the start of this podcast. Make a wish as soon as you can after the new moon eclipse has taken place. That basically sends your wishes out into the universe and uh, where they can start to manifest. But remember, it's like a to-do list. You, you set your intentions and then you take inspired action, small inspired steps, preferably every day, towards manifesting your goals. So ideally make your wishes and set your intentions something you can do something about, not just something where you're kind of wishing for something and there's nothing you can do towards making it happen. It's a new moon eclipse. It's in the sign of Aries. Look in my diary or, or elsewhere for what that means for you. If you're in my Mainly Moonology membership, I'll make sure you get a PDF about what that means for you. Have an amazing week and I will speak to you next week. Lots of love.